Hello and welcome to the Australia Indonesia Center's first webinar about the role of women in driving inclusive economic growth. This webinar is hosted in partnership with the Victorian Government Trade and Investment Southeast Asia. My name is Valerina Daniel. I'm a news anchor and currently I'm acting as the Industry Fellow for Communications and Women Leadership of the Australia Indonesia Center. The Australia Indonesia Center's mission is to build on the links between the two countries, Indonesia and Australia. It hopes to bring together researchers, industry, civil society and governments to discuss some of the important issues that we are grappling with today. Now, today is April 21st, 2021. In Indonesia, we celebrate it as Hari Kartini, and that's why I'm wearing kebaya today. So Kartini is one of the pioneers of women empowerment initiation in Indonesia. So this webinar is going to highlight the achievement of women in Indonesia's growing economy. It is also proof that women can challenge the traditional gender norms that constrain women's economic participation and contribution. So please stay with us until the end because we have exciting speakers who are ready to share with you. And I have been informed that today's audience are from business and government sectors and universities. So for your information, after this the discussion, we will also have a question and answer session. So you are welcome to post questions to our panelists on the chat box. Ladies and gentlemen, to open our webinar, we are joined by Ibu Rebecca Hall, the Commissioner for Victoria to Southeast Asia. Rebecca is an experienced leader with a focus on strategy, policy, and partnerships to grow education, trade, and investment for Australia. Before being appointed to become Victoria's Commissioner to Southeast Asia almost a year ago, she was the head of International Education Center Excellence for Australian Trade and Investment Commission, or Austrade. So without further ado, I would like to now invite Ibu Rebecca Hall to deliver your opening remarks. Ibu Rebecca, the screen is yours. Thank you so very much, Ibu Valerina, and to our partners at Australia Indonesia Center. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure to join you here for this conversation. Um, I have a picture behind me, which is uh, an image of, of Melbourne. Uh, and I am actually sitting here in Melbourne this week. So um, I'm delighted, thanks to, to Zoom and to this partnership to, to be part of this uh, conversation. Um, as uh, Iba Valerina uh, acknowledged, it is um, uh, Hari Kartini. And so I think it's such an important day for us to be hosting this, this conversation. Um, and I personally am looking forward to hearing from our three panellists and to learning more about, uh, particularly from the Indonesia uh, perspective, um, what will look different, I hope, um, in a post-COVID world and what we will continue to be able to uh, break through in advance because of um, women leaders like um, Kartini and, and the work that's gone on before. I want to just focus my opening remarks on, on a few key areas. Um, one, just to introduce the role of the Commissioner for Victoria to Southeast Asia um, and what that, what that means and how we hope to continue to engage um, with, with our audience. So I do have the privilege to lead a team in Southeast Asia, including uh, an excellent team in Jakarta. Uh, and our role is to promote uh, Victoria uh, and particularly in this case, our engagement with Southeast Asia on trade, investment and education. And uh, from what I've read um, of Kartini and her, her position uh, in, um, uh, in the women's empowerment movement in, uh, in Indonesia, I think um, education was certainly uh, an area that uh, she made a huge uh, impact in. And I think education for us is the key to our, our relationship, the Victoria-Indonesia relationship. And so very keen to continue uh, that, that conversation. Um, for, for us as an agency as well, uh, Global Victoria and Invest Victoria, uh, taking a, a, a role on women in trade um, and women in economic development is an important position 
for us. It's also an important position for the Victorian government. Just uh, just last month, uh, being the first state government in Australia to enact a Gender Equality Act and to have a uh, commissioner for public sector gender equality as well. So from a policy level, but also from a program level, uh, we are very interested in, in working across um, uh, Southeast Asia in particular with our partners in Indonesia uh, around uh, the role of women in driving um, economic growth and recovery. I think, um, and this may come up in your, uh, your panel conversations as well, of course, uh, this isn't about saying it is only women's uh, role or the role of us to, to enact that change. And so I'm really looking forward to uh, how the world is transforming and will transform uh, in a post-COVID world and recognising that if we want that transformation to, to stick and to last, we also need to make sure we transform the role of women in our economy and society. So on behalf of the Victorian government, we are just um, absolutely delighted to join with you here today for this conversation. It actually rounds out four events that we've run across Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, and concluding today um, on the 21st of April, this very important day uh, for, for you in Indonesia and one that um, I have shared with my daughters for the first time today as well uh, in terms of um, what, what it means and what we, um, what we have ahead of us. So just thank you everyone uh, for your time, particularly to the AIC and to my team who's pulled this together. And I look forward to uh, listening to today's conversation. Thank you, Rebecca, for uh, giving us your opening remarks. Um, yes, uh, that's absolutely true. Um, we have a lot of things to discuss today because as we already know that the traditional norms sometimes uh, don't allow women to contribute much to the society. And so uh, based on my experience as well, as one of the uh, daughters of uh, Minangis uh, ethnic in Indonesia, uh, we already have a system called matrilineal system. It means that uh, the system of this traditional uh, society giving or highlighted the importance of women in their society. So, but uh, um, having that condition, uh, we can still see today that women still struggling to improve their uh, contributions and participations in our society, uh, let alone the, uh, to help uh, build our economic in the future. So that's why today we are very happy, we're very glad to meet our speakers. Um, so I will introduce you, our extraordinary three speakers today. Um, the first speakers that I have today is Ibu Setia and Milesia Mumin, uh, President Director of Damri. So first I will uh, read her bio. Um, Ibu Tia was appointed as President Director of Damri in December 2017. So Damri uh, is a motor transport enterprise of the Republic of Indonesia, a state-owned enterprise operating road passenger and cargo transport across the nation. It has seven business segments, namely urban, intercity, international transportation, city integrated, uh, transportation or airport buses, travel and tourism, government assignment, and logistic transportation. She has been awarded Indonesia's best CEO twice. Previously, she was president director of PT Trias Cipta OSG PMDN and PT Sauda Trias Cipta, as well as a policy writer for President Jokowi's first cabinet or cabinet kerja. So without further ado, I would like to say hi to Ibu Tia. Hello, Ibu Tia. Hi. Hi, how are, how are you? How are you? <laughs> I hope everything is fine. Fine, you're fine. Oh, uh, we we have the matching outfits. Yeah, we were wearing our traditional costumes. Yes, we are wearing each costume. Now you're wearing. Uh, is it um, baju kurung? And now this is from uh, Makassar. Makassar. Oh, okay, yeah. so uh, very ethnic and very beautiful. Thank you for joining us today, Butia. Thank so, you. Before, uh, we start the discussion with uh, other panelists. I would like to ask you one uh, very important question. So how can women drive inclusive post-COVID economic growth? I think, uh, you know, actually for me, women can do everything, so. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, I, I don't know, uh, I mean, 
in my life, I never have uh, experience, really experience in gender uh, inequality. So, uh, because I, I work in a, you know, what we, you, what you call it, a uh, man world working place. So uh, I started uh, to work for the, uh, like that since I was uh, graduated from university. So, uh, you know, like, uh, I think a uh, woman can play role in every circumstance, in every uh, condition of the country, and uh, women can contribute for uh, uh, the economic growth, even though in the pandemic era. Okay, thank you, Ibutia, for answering that question. I uh, will ask you more questions later on during our discussion sessions. Uh, now I'm going to introduce you our second panelist. Uh, she's Ibu Liza Zenpurba, uh, retail entrepreneur and strategic sales marketing expert. As you can see on the screen today, uh, I will read her bio first. Ibu Liza is a serial entrepreneur and strategic sales and marketing expert. She's an investment specialist for SME Investindo. She's executive director of uh, Tivovlia Bags, producing and yep. marketing premium woven and leather bags to both local and international markets and soiree events, providing consulting and event management services. She has also previously founded Posture uh, Pilates Studio, where she is an international certified instructor. Wow, so you must be very healthy then, Ibu. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today because um, as you know, that is very important to have our health during these days in the COVID era, right? Yes. yes, thank so, you, um, Valina and Daniel. It's an honor to be here and all the senior ladies here. Um, you know, I've heard about uh, Ibu, uh, sorry, Setia, Setia uh, Milatia, Bu Mukmin, and Ibu Hil Helianti Hilman, ya Ibu, ya. So actually, um, yeah, uh, my bags, actually, wolf layer bags, Ibu Valerina. <laughs> it's a typo. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the wolf layer bags, yeah. And uh, I'm working at the, actually I've been working um, as the SME doer myself uh, in retail uh, industry, uh, bags, uh, food bags and, and uh, the exercise uh, business. So uh, at this time, I'm working on the uh, uh, SME Infestindo. It's the uh, bridging, uh, bridging uh, fun, uh, format for a between the investor and also the SME and MSME uh, uh, doer. That's okay. Yeah. Great. Um, now, uh, can you please also answer the, the same question? So how can women drive inclusive post-COVID economic growth? Uh, I've been working with the MSM, uh, the micro, small, medium enterprises and uh, work together with them um, uh, with the collaboration between the platform and also the the financial uh, platform, uh, the digital marketing platform and the financial pa platform. Uh, I've been working with uh, some um, colleagues uh, through the organization. So uh, we hope that the backbone of the Indonesia economy that contribute 40% to the economy is the MSME, uh, especially women apprenticeship. So uh, we survived 1998. And uh, since COVID, uh, a lot of things going on, especially we can start everything from home, especially for moms, especially for women. And uh, that's, we started from there. And of course, we don't forget uh, the SME level because SME level, the small medium enterprises is, uh, are the companies uh, who's been, who've, who've been working their companies for like three to five years. That also another backbone. So we started, I, I started and worked together from there with uh, you know, all the doers uh, at MSME or an SME level, yeah. Wow, great. So I guess it's true that in every crisis, uh, there is an opportunity, especially for us in during COVID era, uh, opportunity to grow for SMEs. Uh, economy is very flourishing these days. So thank you very much uh, for Ibulisa for joining our panel today. Now I'm going to uh, introduce our uh, third speaker, uh, Ibu Helianti Hilman, founder and executive chairperson of Javara. Ibu Helianti is the chief promoter in sustaining Indonesia's food biodiversity heritage by introducing and bringing indigenous food products from across Indonesia to the broader market. 
through partnerships uh, with farmers, foragers, fishers, and food artisans, uh, Javara offers a wide range of finest natural, organic, and artisanal uh, food products, originating from various regions of Indonesia archipelago. To further support the mission, in 2017, she founded Sekola Seniman Pangan, an action-based entrepreneurial learning facility and business ecosystem to nurture the growth of food entrepreneurship among rural youth and women. So, and she is also an alumnus of the AIC's Australia Indonesia Leaders Program. So welcome to our panel today, Ibu Helianti. Uh, thank you, Mbak Valeria. Thank you, Bu Rebecca, for having me here. It's been an honor and sharing this panel with amazing ladies here. Okay, Ibu, can you please answer the uh, questions about how can women drive inclusive post-COVID economic growth? What do you think about that? Um, I think uh, because my, my work is really on the food sector, I think during the COVID, we are the easiest um, sector to work with because regardless with the COVID, everybody needs to eat and everybody wanted to eat healthier food that allows them to have a better immunity system. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, and I think the shifting that we had to do um, actually with regards to uh, COVID is about digitalizing everything that we do uh, from pushing into the e-commerce. And uh, now we saw like an increase of 480% uh, for our, uh, our e-commerce transactions. Uh, and also in terms of the learning, because we have a school of rural entrepreneurship we have to redesign it um, as, a, as an online classes. And it was a quite challenging because our school is an action base uh, because we practically train them how to process commodity into added value products, but we managed to turn it into something digital. Um, and we use a lot of you know, mobile phones basically to allow them to take, um, to capture what their activity is using the, the photo and the video. Um, so that's how we survive, basically, the digital aspects of it help so much during the COVID. Wow, it's good to hear that. Uh, well, thank you for answering the questions. Um, now I'm going to go back to Ibu uh, Tia. Uh, we are going to enter our discussion uh, session now. Uh, I'm going to ask each of you, uh, the panelists, uh, to answer the questions. And then after that, I'm going to open the q and sessions. But first, I'm going to ask the question that has already been submitted by our, our audience uh, previously before we start this event. And then next, I'm also inviting, once again, the audience for you to join our conversation by posting your question on our chat box. So uh, now I'm going back to Ibutia. Uh, as you said before on your introduction that you are like a, an angel in a male dominated world, but <laughs> you don't feel any constraint or any uh, challenging in uh, improving your career. Uh, so it, it, when you say that, uh, um, what do you think that uh, the, the reason uh, for you to be able to do that I mean, because uh, as we know, a lot of women are trying to move up to the, you know, to the upper level, but it's very hard for them to do that. And so how can we facilitate more women in senior leadership positions in, for example, state-owned enterprises? Thank you, Mbak Valeria. Uh, I'd like to use Mbak. Is, is it okay for you? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, mm, Actually, my assignment now is the toughest assignment that I've ever, I ever have uh, in my career. Uh, you know, because uh, uh, you read my, my CV, but uh, prior, uh, actually, uh, pr uh, before I joined this uh, Dambri, uh, I was the country director of ITDP. Institute for Transportation Development and Policy. It's an international uh, international institution. So, uh, and it's uh, the field of services is, uh, you know, uh, we give grant and uh, assistance for the countries that uh, has a poor level of service of public transport. And then that's why uh, I was, uh, at that time, I was the country director, and then uh, I got the offer uh, to become a Dambri, uh, Dambri CEO. But the challenge is, uh, 
you know, I never imagine that uh, the company that I have, because uh, prior to my, my assignment now, I always have a company that have a settle a uh, good corporate governance and established system and everything. And then when I join here, uh, this company is like 75 years of age already. This is like the oldest uh, transportation, uh, bus transportation in Indonesia. And, uh, you know, when you uh, join a 75 years company, you expect that everything's already settled because it's already mature in terms of age. But the problem is uh, when I uh, first come here, what I found out is uh, there is no digitalization, even bookkeeping still in manual. And you know, we have like 4,000 buses and all transaction is uh, booked by manual way even no digitalization at all and then uh, no operational system setting up so like everybody on the field uh, doing whatever they want to do so and uh, no control no, no cost control no revenue control uh, i mean in terms of digitalization everything uh, was done in manual way uh, you know, and our coverage services is from Sabang to Merauke. We have 55 uh, branches uh, from Sabang to Merauke. And we have like, uh, when I uh, step in this company, in this company, it, we have like 5,400 employees, you know, and I was the first uh, when, woman that uh, been uh, accused as a CEO. This is the first time for Damri to have woman CEO. You know, uh, at that time, you know, I was I was very uh, so I have like taking my breath first, like, and then I try to clear my mind. What should I do? And then I do the mapping and everything. You know, and. Now we are, now we already, uh, we have a ticketing system, we have all digitizing uh, system from uh, from fi finance to the operation to the inventory and everything we digitize. But the problem is because of this company is not really, was not really managed uh, professionally. So it's been uh, in 2018 when I first come here, uh, it's been 12 years, the, the human resources here without a structured capacity building, no training, no capacity building at all. So that's the first challenge I, I, I faced in this company. Uh, I don't have many storytelling for my previous company because, you know, I work with people with graduate, you know, with uh, postgraduate level and everything. But in this company, this is the first time I work with 92% of the human resources is as uh, high school and under, and then only 8% is graduating from the university of college. So uh, it, it's not as simple as that. So uh, when uh, prior to this assignment, I think I just, you know, I just follow the, the like, like following the flow, you know, because uh, every time I got promotion and then, you know, I work hard and, you know, as a woman, my mother always told me because my mother is also, uh, uh, working uh, also uh, has a career. So she, she always told me that, she told me that if you want to be good as a woman in career, you have to be very, very, very professional, twice professional than other people. Otherwise, you cannot be compete because sometimes you got uh, unconscious bias from people because of the culture, for because of the tradition, and uh, 
that's what I carry along uh, all my life. That I have to work smart. I have to work very hard. I have to work. I have to be professional, even uh, two times professional. <laughs> you know. So uh, now we already have everything digitized. Uh, it's not as simple as that because you know the problem is uh, the uh, you know people hesitate to change. So I have to make a prudent uh, change management uh, and I have but prudent but firm you know and the good thing about women we are multitasking and we we, we like to do with meticulous things you know so everything we go until detail even though it's not my job to go to until that detail but from policy to detail I have to know it because uh, this is this company is very special. So, okay. uh, uh, but yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I I'm really uh, interested in the fact that you presented before about 92 percent of the people who work for your company are only graduated from high school. So uh, during this you know digital transformation era, how can you know you transform them to co-op with the situation these days? Uh, communication, the the key the key is communication, and uh, you know you involve on every change. So you don't only uh, draw the change on the table, but you involve directly, and then you simplify your language, because you know when you talk uh, to people, uh, the people that graduate from the university or they already have the uh, pattern of thinking that you know you are the same level so it's easy to explain but when you work with that type of uh, employees you need to simplify your language and you can uh, you have to uh, understand uh, their terms of language because you know uh, uh, it's quietly, uh, you know, it's not easy. It, it's not easy, but uh, being a woman, it's easy because uh, when you are in a, for example, like household, you have to work with many people actually, especially when you are Indonesian. You have to work with gardener, you have to work with uh, the people who, who help you, uh, the assistants at home, and you have to work with uh, the parents at school and everything, you know. So I think being a woman is a, a kind of advantage for me, not on, uh, not because of the uh, gender itself, but from the way of thinking and uh, the way you pattern yourself. Because you are, you just like a mom, right? <laughs> so uh, you wanna. You wanna direct your kids in a in a direction that you wanna achieve. So no matter how, no matter what, you have to do it. So you are trained to be firm because you know, as a woman, you are trained to be firm. I think. Okay, so it's very interesting. So I guess uh, being a woman, according to your answer, has a competitive advantage uh, because sure. you are a mom and also a multitasker. So it's easier for you to manage all the people who work for you. Uh, so hopefully this will also help Damri uh, to transform itself into, you know, the digital transformation of transportation sector in the future. So thank you, Ibutia, for answering that question. Uh, now I'm going to go to Ibu Lisa Zenpurba. So Ibu Lisa, uh, how can we best support women entrepreneurs of micro SMEs through financing and capital investment? That's my first question to you. Uh, okay, one second. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, um, okay. Um, okay, as we know that um, during this COVID, uh, we, uh, sorry, I cannot see everyone here. Uh, during this COVID, we uh, have suffered uh, in financial side for the SMSME or SME. 
So uh, what I have done, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, I work together with some colleagues, some friends. Uh, uh, I call that the power of collaboration. Um, we can work together uh, on the platform like uh, what you call that the space for the space for the small medium enterprises as well as the micro uh, micro small medium enterprises uh, and also the platform for digital marketing services and also the finance uh, for the loans for them so uh, that's what I've been doing that's uh, that's the efforts that uh, I've been making for uh, the industry and also I'm as a doer there and some of my friends working together with me there. So come again uh, for the questions. Is that uh, connected, Ibu Valerina? Is yes. That, yeah. Yes, I we can. can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah. Uh, for, uh, uh, continuing about the financing itself, uh, I have uh, some pointers uh, like uh, from what I have uh, researched and uh, I've uh, talked in discussion with uh, the doers uh, that um, the banks or uh, any financial institution need to tailoring the loan products for the, um, you know, to match the needs of uh, the unique needs of the uh, micro small medium enterprises or small medium enterprises uh, it become opportunistic for them uh, if uh, they can find the uh, finance program uh, the loan program that uh, match uh, with their business cadence so um, yeah that's what I can mention um, and also uh, the problem with the, the Indonesian women entrepreneurship uh, is uh, actually they work um, they have to be tough and persistent. They've been, we've been like that <laughs> since you were born, right? Ibu Valerina and other Ibu Ibu here. So we have to work on the domestic. We have to work the business from home. And as well, we have to think about how to get the finance uh, because in Indonesia, when uh, for uh, SME and MSME, when they want to get the loan from the bank, they must get the approval from their husband. That's a, uh, one of the hassle. So um, I think the bank or other financial institution should provide like uh, other format that, uh, you know, uh, make the process easier or even give choices for the woman to have like, uh, you know, a broadened uh, collateral that can be as a guarantee when they uh, access the loans. That's, that's first for the finance. And second thing is collaborations. I work with uh, organization called uh, Infina, Influencing Indonesia, that provide the uh, digital marketing uh, services and enhancement for the MSME and SME. So I work together with the uh, this uh, the what the the institution or other party who can provide the place for Infina Center uh, to be the place as a Centra UKM. It means a small medium enterprises center where there is a Infina class, Infina community, Infina lab, uh, all the things that can tailor, uh, uh, can make the tailor, uh, tailor made for uh, matching the needs for MSC and SME uh, uh, works. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, this, the third is, um, uh, I believe in the a power of sisterhood uh, because our Indonesian culture is gotong royong, so uh, during the COVID, as we know that uh, it has formed such an empathic society that even uh, made us stronger to work together, uh, we started uh, everything from what we have on hands and we collaborate. Uh, and I think Ibu Helianti here uh, is uh, more expert explaining about how things uh, work from home with the food and everything, yeah, Ibu, yeah? Because um, since the COVID, uh, most, uh, the most uh, business, uh, home business that has been established is more to food. Uh, we never stop uh, eating and we never stop <laughs> to eat. So yeah, that's, that's the most, uh, the most, pro uh, the most uh, promising and profitable at this time. That's from my explanation. So finance, uh, the power of collaborations and also the, the power of sisterhood.
Okay, so it's interesting that you highlighted the power of sisterhood, or in Indonesia, sometimes we call it the power of ma'ma, right? Yeah. So, uh, ma'ma means mom, mother. So, for uh, those of you who does um, who don't doesn't really um, familiar with the uh, terminology, uh, so uh, with ha having having that you know uh, sisterhood um, spirit, uh, do you think um, that already helped to leverage? the uh, competitive advantage of Indonesian women entrepreneurs these days? Yes, yes. Uh, because, um, uh, well, we, um, well, this is just illustration, but uh, as we experienced the presidential uh, uh, campaign before in 2019 to, yeah, 2019, we had that through organizations and we know that uh, power of mama <laughs> is most uh, peer pressuring. <laughs> it's quite, it's inf really influencing how this uh, organization can work uh, to, you know, to get votes uh, regardless of what, uh, whatever the president, they, whoever the president they, they chose. That's, uh, I, I saw that as the opportunity. Um, I saw that as the phenomena uh, that uh, very influencing and can be used uh, during, the, uh, during this COVID season. I mean, we, if, we can do, if we can do the power of mama for a political reason, why not doing it for, for the, uh, you know, for strengthen the economy, uh, as, especially at the micro, small, medium enterprises and SME level, because, uh, because it it uh, the the women entrepreneurship in Indonesia uh, for all the micro small medium enterprises Indonesian have uh, 64 million 50 percent is women trainer so uh, it's 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 our, it's contribute 40 percent to the backbone of economy and uh, it also of course it uh, it is such an important uh, uh, a role to play in this stage of government doing the percepatan economy, what you call that, the economy acceleration, yeah, post-COVID-19. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you, Ibiliza, for answering uh, those questions. So, um, now I'm going to go to Ibu Helianti Hilman. So, Ibu Helianti, uh, we know from, okay, we learned from Ibu Tia that women can lead. And then from Ibu Liza, we can also learn that uh, the collaboration of women proven to be effective in improving, you know, the life of women in Indonesia. So, uh, but for your case, probably we would like to ask, how can we best support women, especially the farmers and small business owners to access global markets? Okay, so um, I think that's what we've been uh, addressing both through Javara and the Sekolah Seni Bantangan, which is the School of Rural Entrepreneurship. Um, I think by nature, a woman operates um, with the intuition to nurture. Um, so yes, we run businesses, but at the same time, the nurturing aspects is always there among the women. Um, so. Um, including when we wanted to support SMEs to be able to compete at the global market, the aspects of capacity building is, uh, you know, is very much crucial um, because we have to start with whether we have a winning products uh, or we have a winning uh, services because regardless um, the other element of the business, if you don't have a winning products, it will be difficult for you to compete. Uh, because the uh, uh, there are many aspects of competition, uh, but one of it, which you, if you want to win, is basically to make sure that you have a very good uh, product. And this is where the innovation aspects comes in. Um, so one of the things that we do at Javara and at Sekolah Seniman Pangan is to embrace uh, the innovation, the science, and the technology uh, to be able to to deliver the product. So I'm giving you an example. Um, can you imagine with the climate change, yeah? Uh, if we're talking about uh, salt artisans, uh, our uh, salt farmers, uh, before in the past, you know, they can predict which months of the year that they could not do productions because of the raining season. But with the climate change, it's impossible because even in June, rain can come. And, you know, it ruins, uh, you know, the, the crystallization process of the salt. So that's why bringing in the technology is important. So that's why 
uh, we uh, we support it to have a greenhouse so the production is done within a greenhouse so one is innovation another one is technology uh, and then the third and fourth element is about branding and marketing so I think that's where Indonesia has to step up is about building brands because if you go overseas uh, when you are asking about, uh, do you know about Thai food? Everybody knows about Thai food. You know, when you ask about Indian food, everybody knows. Everybody knows about Japanese or Korean. But when overseas, unless you have lived in Indonesia or you are married to Indonesian, if you are asking people overseas, they have no clue what Indonesian food is all about. Um, we had this amazing event during the Frankfurt Book Fair in 2015 where Indonesian and delegation are bringing the culinary team. And um, it's to our surprise that the Germans, they even think that nasi goreng is a Chinese food because every Chinese restaurant is selling nasi goreng. So that's why uh, in, in Javara, we are focusing also how to build the branding of origin, how to build the pride and dignity of the farmers beyond the product, but also in telling the story behind the products, the values behind the products, the philosophy. And that's where Indonesia is very rich. Indonesia is blessed with the mega food biodiversity. Uh, it's amazing the range of the food biodiversity where we have from Aceh to Papua. Uh, and we have a very rich uh, culinary tradition it's amazing, you know, the technique, the recipes and the methods, you know, that we have. So basically, that is a starting point for Indonesians. Um, it's, um, it's a comparative advantage which the country doesn't have to that level. So it's a matter how to bring in the entrepreneurship, the global standards, the branding, the marketing to be able to move forward uh, to a global market. Oh, that's a good input. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is, how, because you're saying about, you know, we have the capacity and we're very potential. We have the potential to enter the global market. So how can we leverage skills of Indonesian women to boost Australia Indonesia trade, for example? Okay, um, I think the, the AIC also done a lot of things. Uh, the, the Australia uh, government has also bridged uh, a lot of um, activities. So for examples, um, uh, the, the Australian government also uh, uh, organized a uh, learning experience for Indonesian food, te the food technologies for women that are in the food business uh, to learn and have a, have a peer learning in Australia. Uh, and I think one of our uh, team in Javara has, you know, the privilege of going to, to Australia to learn about that. So I think educational, uh, there is no border to education. We can learn from many things from many countries. For example, for many years, uh, Javara has been sending our farmers to Italy, to Italy uh, and do a live in with Italian farmers uh, because uh, the Italian farmers are really good in branding themselves. Um, so uh, basically, um, we don't have, we don't put a border when it comes to transfer of knowledge of learning. So it's the same thing with, uh, with Indonesia and Australia. Um, so I think there are many uh, benefits that we had through these collaborations uh, and especially uh, the Victoria government, uh, uh, the, the um, Melbourne, because it's sort of like the, the capital of gastronomy. Uh, one of the inspiration for the gastronomy and that's where we also draw our inspiration in you know how to move this commodity that we have this amazing natural resources that we have into something gastronomical uh, because then it gives a better value and better appreciations uh, to what we have. Okay, so education is the key. Thank you very much, uh, Ibu Herenti, for answering that question. Now I'm going to start our question and answer session. Um, first, I would like to uh, read uh, the first question that have been submitted. Uh, it's from Lisa Humaida, uh, Senior Program Manager uh, from DFAT. Uh, the question is, what is the most pressing problem you would like to address in your respective businesses. So uh, I think this question is for all the panelists. So uh, I would like to give the first uh, chance to Ibu Tia to answer that question. You can see the question as well on the screen. Ibu Tia, maybe you would like to unmute yourself first. Uh, sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, now you can start. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Bafa Verina. 
uh, the most pressing that uh, pressing issues that uh, we would like to address is the uh, capacity building for the woman, for the woman employee in our company. Uh, as I as I explained before, that uh, for twelve years prior to my uh, assignment here, uh, we don't have structured uh, capacity building in terms of training or whatever, in terms uh, of many, uh, various form of uh, capacity building, we almost, it's very minimal, very, very minimal, it's almost zero. So, uh, on 2018, at the first time I came here, only three percent, uh, no, sorry, 1.5 percent of women leader in this company because we have a certain layer of leader uh, but it's only 1.5 percent and now after three years uh, we already reach uh, 10 percent but it's not easy i i hope that i can increase the number more uh, more extreme like 15 percent or 20 percent like that but the problem is about the uh, training. Uh, so uh, right now, in a gender issue, in a gender equality issue, we are uh, also supported by ADB. But I think more support we can, we can, we, it, it would be advantage for us to speed up all the process of the cap, this capacity building. So, uh, you know, the human capital is very important when you do the transformation. Without the uh, good human capital, it will be, it, it's, it will not easy mm -hmm. to complete all the tasks. Uh, that's why uh, we really need uh, support for this, you know, because now we only get support from the government of uh, uh, not really actually in our 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 own finance financial uh, strength uh, but in pandemic you know the transportation got impacted very hard very very hard you know because people you know there is a past baby when people cannot go uh, uh, intercity or you know they have to stay home working from home uh, it affected our it affect our financial uh, condition. Uh, before uh, before pandemic, we still can uh, build the capacity building from our financial because uh, uh, first year I, I I joined this company, I increased the. Uh, profit with a 340 percent increase in profit so that's why we have uh, in a good condition company but in pandemic you know transportation as you know uh, we got impacted a lot because people don't travel almost at all <laughs> almost at all so uh, uh, that's why uh, adv gave us support a uh, little bit of with the system, for example, like the, uh, uh, how to uh, structure the policy, which uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the policy that uh, uh, gender equality uh, friendly, that kind of thing. So uh, I think it will help. And any help we can do as long as it can uh, increase, increase the cap capability and uh, competency of our employees, it will be very helpful for us. Thank you, Ibutia. Uh, because we uh, have a few minutes left, not much time left, so I would like to ask the next question uh, from Ibu Diana Pratiwi, President of IDN Victoria, uh, to Ibu Lisa. How do you respond to either intentional or unintentional sexism when dealing with stakeholders? Okay, for me, number one is stay professional. 
uh, it's so unavoidable that I was born and uh, living and working in um, um, in a, a, such a culture where um, a patronial culture. But uh, I think it shouldn't stop us uh, to, to be creative or uh, to make something great here. So um, uh, stay professional is uh, my key. Uh, but in case uh, the um, the uh, rule number one doesn't work. So I will go to uh, uh, the philosophy that I call being a neck to the head. So uh, I believe that uh, for a head to stand, a uh, uh, head needs the strong neck. So uh, in my experience, uh, I've been working as a strong neck to the head. And I know uh, from there, uh, I can be like, um, I can do I can do anything that I want actually, but I don't <laughs> in respect to that. But uh, that's uh, helping me a lot because I got uh, support uh, from, uh, from my boss or from my spouse, from uh, any, um, any uh, male working uh, uh, colleague. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what I experienced. And so far it worked, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> for the next future. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ibu Lisa. Now uh, to Ibu Helianti. Uh, we have a question from Ibu Yulia Imayati. Uh, uh, it's a GESI consultant. Um, what would you wish to have done differently to integrate your business in the global value chain more? Oh, uh, please unmute yourself first. Thank you. Um, I think uh, we we did uh, a lot uh, in terms of digital transformation in the last two years and especially uh, speed up by the COVID basically. But um, if I can turn back the time, probably the digitalization should be done much, much more earlier. So that's, that's what I think. Mm, okay. So um, we still have time. Uh, we have a Question from audience. Um, okay, so uh, this is um, maybe a question from the audience about: Are any of the panelists interested to represent my one business in Indonesia? So maybe, um, do you think uh, there will be more um, opportunities from uh, uh, business sector from outside of Indonesia to invest more in Indonesia in the future? Yeah, uh, Ibu Helianti. Yeah, um, I think in terms of the gastronomical relationship, uh, first, because we have the benefits of the closeness uh, as, as a country, but also in terms of the diversity of the, um, the, the rich culture in the terms of the gastronomy. So I think the cross investment, the cross trading, uh, and even in terms of tourism is there. So because I know exactly during the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival, a lot of Indonesians uh, went there. Uh, including, you know, a lot of chefs and, you know, things like that and they take inspirations. And the other way around, there are so many Australians uh, that are also have their uh, businesses in Indonesia as well in terms of the food and gastronomy. Okay, thank you. So uh, before we conclude this uh, event, I would like to ask uh, one of you, uh, I mean, I mean each, of, uh, each of you to give a closing remarks. Uh, first, Ibu Tia. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. I'd like to say my grateful. Uh, this is uh, very fortunate that you invited me to come to this forum to, for discussion. And uh, it's really uh, amazing that I can learn from other sectors. <laughs> because my sector is always transportation since the first time of my career. So I learned a lot from you, from Ibu Helianti and Ibu Lisa. Thank you very much for all the slides. Uh, it is really good to have discussion like this to enrich my thinking and my point of view. And I think uh, I also ask. Uh, I also hope that if there is opportunity from the government of Victoria that we know in the terms of a public transportation system, uh, 
is more advanced than uh, Jakarta or Indonesia in general. Uh, if uh, there is uh, any assistance of training or you know cooperation or collaboration that we can do together, or at least like we can uh, uh, see how they how the business practice there and you know to enrich our uh, uh, our cap cap capability uh, to ensure that this transformation can go well in this company. Uh, indeed, thank you, Ma Valerina, for the opportunity. Thank you, Ibu Tia. Now, Ibu Liza? Actually, um, uh, the remarks already like uh, being answered on your second question, Ibu Valerina. <laughs> so, uh, for me, uh, um, for me, what I meant uh, being neck to the being strong neck to the head it means that we have to uh, equip ourselves as much as uh, we can absorb we can afford uh, that's the key uh, to uh, uh, conquer uh, this <laughs> patrilineal <laughs> patrilineal uh, what you call it uh, environment of working and businesses uh, of course uh, i i in the business i prefer i prefer uh, um, using the soft approach uh, to have the win-win solution. That's what uh, the philosophy of being strong to the head. And uh, as a woman, of course, uh, we are being advantage of using our EQ rather than our IQ. That's the most advantage uh, for me. So we can like dance uh, on everything that we aim <laughs> towards the objection. Thank you, Ibu. Thank you, Ibu Lisa. Uh, now, Ibu Helianti. Yes, uh, well, uh, mine will be very short. I think uh, cross-learning and cross-collaborations um, will bring us uh, along the way in the future. So I think that will be, uh, and I really appreciate the efforts that this has been done by uh, Australian Indonesian Centre as well as the Victoria uh, government, uh, because I, I don't know if anyone remembered actually one that encouraged Javara to extend to the restaurant business. Actually, it was started because there is a delegation from the Victoria government to uh, Jakarta that wanted to do the breakfast meeting inside our store. And at that time, we did not have our restaurant. So we have to do a pop-up one. But anyway, um, we always find a lot of encouragement from the collaborations with um, Australia through Australia Indonesian Center as well as the Victoria government. And we look forward for more collaborations in the future. Thank you very much to Ibu Tia, Ibu Liza, and Ibu Helianti for uh, giving us your closing remarks. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, those uh, closing remarks are also the end of our session or our webinar today. Uh, thank you for staying with us until the end. So uh, from our discussion, I think uh, we found out that women have the competitive advantage of being a role model and also a leader in our uh, society, uh, in our economic uh, situations uh, and then also the second one is education is the best way to build the capacity of women uh, to increase their participations in the inclusive economic growth and lastly uh, collaboration collaboration is also the key to improve uh, women's participations in building more inclusive uh, economic growth in the future. So thank you very much to Ibu Tia, Ibu Liza, and Ibu Elianti uh, for being our panelists uh, today. Um, and also uh, thank you very much for our audience for staying with us until the end. Um, that's it for us today from the Australian Indonesia Center and also the Victorian government. Uh, would like to thank you for your participation. I am Valerina Daniel, thank you and stay healthy. <laughs>